starting. Good. Okay. Perek Shlosha Ve'esrim, page 153, Sho'el. Um, should we just start from Amar Rav Yehuda? Yes. Or, sir. Yeah? Sir. Okay. What was that last one about? Yeah, the last bodies one. and when, how long they're connected, the soul's connected to the body. Finally, it sort of visits the body for 12 months and then after the 12 months it goes and finds its home at the foot of the heavenly throne. Right. Because Shmuel was able to be raised from the dead during his 12 months, um, within 12 months of dying. Okay. Amar Rav Yehuda Barei de Rav Shmuel Bar Shile Shilat Mishmei de Rav. So Rav Yehuda, the son of Rav Shmuel, Bar Shilat said in the name of Rav. Mehes Pedo Shel Adam. From a person's eulogy, Nikar im ben haolam haba hu im lav. It can be to discern whether or not the deceased is is destined to enter the world to come. That's correct, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's apparent whether or not he has a share in the world to come. So, from a person's eulogy, mm. uh, it says here based on the effect it has on the people at the funeral. Well, well. He says, if the listeners are pained and brought to tears during the eulogy, it is clear that the person was righteous. Uh-huh. Ah, any is this so? The Hamar le Rav le Rav Shmuel Bashilat Achim behespeda. Be careful delivering a moving eulogy at my funeral. Datan keimna. For I shall be standing there watching you. Yeah? Well, um, stir the hearts of those gathered during my eulogy, for I will be standing there and listening to your words. So the question arises if the eulogy of a truly righteous person invariably evokes tears from the audience, why did Rav? Who, who was certainly righteous? Why did he have to? Uh, why did he find it necessary to make this statement about uh, the eulogy? And then we get the Gemara's answer. Lokasha. There's no difficulty. Ha dimchamo leivachim. Here, uh, the eulogizer tries to stir the audience, and uh, and the audience is indeed stirred. And this is for a, right, a truly righteous person. Ha dim chamu lo achim. And there, when the eulogizer attempts to stir the audience, they are not stirred. So this is for one who's not as righteous. Amalei abayil rabba. Kagon mar, such as master, someone like yourself, tisanu lei kulhu pumbe ditanei, pumbe... Umba Ditaye, who is hated by everyone in Pumba Dita, <laughs> Manachim Hespeda, who will deliver an appropriate eulogy, a moving eulogy for you. Amale, Rabba applied to Abaye, Mistaya at the Rabba Bar Rav Hanan. It will be sufficient if you and Rabba Bar Rav Hanan deliver it. And apparently, um, the rabbi was hated by the citizenry of his city because he was always reproving people for doing the wrong thing. Rashi also says there were certain elements of the community which were notorious for their unethical practices. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought Do you remind you of anywhere? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't say it. Remind you of everywhere? <laughs> yeah, well. Um, but I thought Pumbadita was supposed to be a big, uh, like yeah. one of the. Well, it had the, the big uh, yeshiva in it. He mm. had it. Yeah. But I mean, there Imagine how popular the head of the Kollel here would be if he uh, spoke words of truth and enlightenment about our best din. Who is the head of the Kollel? I don't know. Is there one? There is one. His name is 
escapes me. So he's a very clever man. There was a bit of a... Keeping his mouth shut. A bit of uh, argy bargy I gather, over. It's taking over the reins from the last hit left. Ba'amine Rabbi Lazar Merav. Ezehu ben Olam Who is destined for the world to come? Amalei. Bozecha tishmana dava macharecha lemo. And you, your ears shall hear something from behind you. Someone saying, "Zeh derech lechubo ki tamin vechi tasmilu." This is the way. Walk in it, whether you turn right or left. Rabbi Chanina Ma Kol Shadat Rabotav Nocha Hemenu. Anyone whose conduct pleases his teachers is destined for the world to come. So, who is a person destined for the world to come? Your ears shall hear something from behind you. Someone saying, this is the way, walking it, whether you turn right or left. Oh, that. So, Rav interprets as referring to the funeral of a truly righteous person. Ah, and it's people talking about... It's in reference to people talking about your righteous life. Mm. Uh, anyone who's kind of pleased to teach is a contestant. Okay. Um, so back to Kohelet. While the eulogizers go about the streets. So man goes to his eternal home while the eulogizers go about the streets. B'nai Galila Amre, the people of the Galil, Perform good deeds before your coffin. Um, he translates, do things, and he expands it, that you will want people to say at your eulogy in front of your bed, he says, but coffin, do nicely. And then goes on. B'nei Yehuda, I would have said, I said to him, Lifnei Mitatecha, do good deeds before, I would have said, Lifnei Mitatecha, before you you get interred. Well, we can come to that a bit later, that's uh, not an idea. Uh, good. B'nei Yehuda, Amre, they say about that verse, while the eulogizers go by their streets, I said to him, Lacha Mitatecha, perform deeds behind your coffin. Um, so you do things that you want people to say at your eu- eulogy behind your coffin. Ah, the Lopligae and these are not contradictory. Markiatre, one master reflects his locality, or Markiatre, and the other master reflects the custom of his locale. Ah, the custom in the ga- Galilee was that the eulogizers would stand before the beer, and the custom in Judea was that the eulogizers would stand behind the beer. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that you could do another interpretation entirely. Yeah. One lot is saying... By the way, that was Rashi that you just quoted, if you didn't realise. Uh, of course, I didn't. He just put the expansion in. Yeah. But it seems to me it could also mean that do things, one side is saying that people will... Lead a righteous life that people will praise you for um, publicly, that is, before the beer. Yep. And you, and the other side saying, no, do the righteous things that people will praise you for in the quiet afterwards. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's an excellent interpretation of that, personally. It's Nan Hatam, we learned there in the mission, a Rabbi Lezar Mayor. Shuv your mechad lifnei mitatecha. Repent one day before your death. She'alu tamidav et Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Eliezer's students asked him after hearing this. V'chiyedam yadei zehu yom yamut. But does a person say know which day he will die? Therefore, how is that possible to repent the day before your death? Amalehen he answered. V'kol sheken. All the more so, Yeshua Yom Shema Yamut Lamacha. Let a person 
uh, repent today because he should say to himself that he might die tomorrow. kol yamav bitshuva, and he will find himself all his days in a state of tshuva. And Solomon, as well said in his wisdom from Ecclesiastes, from Kohelet, Bechol et yiyu begadecha levanim, at all times let your garments be white. Beshemen al roshecha al yechsa. And your head never lack oil. Ama rabbi, rabban, so what's that, that is, it, there's a further explanation a bit further on. Oh. But here he just expands saying meaning that a person always needs to be prepared. Yeah. Rashi says the garment is the soul and that at all times keep your soul white and pure through continuous daily repentance. Ama Rabban Yochanan ben Zakai Mashal HaMelech Shazimen et Avadav Lissuda It may be compared to a king who invited his servants to a banquet. But he did not set an exact time for them to come. Uh, so the wise servants among them adorn themselves all the time in appropriate garb. The Yashvu al Petach Bet Hamelach and sat waiting at the door of the palace. Amro and they said to themselves, Kum Chasel Bet Hamelach. Does the king's palace lack for anything? Uh, he's con- expanding it. Does the king is the king's house missing anything necessary for the feast? Certainly, the king could invite them at any moment. Ah, I see. The foolish servants among them went about their work and were neglectful of their attire. Amru, and they said to themselves, "Klum torah." Is there anything, is there any banquet prepared without toil? Uh, of preparing for it. I mean, so, so now they kind of... While the feast is being prepared, we will attend to other matters. You know, there, there's plenty of time. So some of them said this and... No, all the, they contradict themselves. First they said, does the king's palace lack for anything? Which means... That those it could the, go any moment. That, those are the people who realise that oh. the king could be inviting them to the feast at any moment. Oh. And others are saying, well, you know, they've got to prepare this feast so I can get on with my other duties. So they're the foolish. Yeah. Ah, I didn't put two and two together. Sorry. That sort of... So the wise said they sat there waiting, could go any time, and could happen any time. The foolish... Continue to work. Exactly. Well, that reflects. And said they'll have to get ready. The two approaches of ordinary people to being summoned to heaven. Mm. Yep. Suddenly, the king summoned his servants. The wise among them entered before the king adorned. <coughs> And the foolish entered before him soiled because they're engaged in their regular work. Samach, Hamelech, Likrat, Pitfim, the king was happy to greet the wise ones, but Ka'as, Likrat, Tipshim, but he was angry when he greeted the foolish ones. So it's really, it's, it's a metaphor for dressing yourselves in mitzvot. And don't delay doing anything. Yeah. Be um, ready. You will be called up yeah. to the heavenly banquet at any moment. It doesn't mean go and sit in a in a um, yeshiva all day, every day. Well, it could. If you interpret that as being the way, the ultimate mitzvah that outweighs all other mitzvahs. That's not the way I interpret it. No, it's not the way I do either, but <laughs> some people do. Yes, I know some of you do. I know a few people do too. And you get an income for it. If you're in the right column, maybe your wife has to go to work and her spiritual life is so hot that mm. she'll 
going to heaven on your coattails. Did he? He hadn't quite finished with the so, fools and the wise. Amar, so the king said to the wise ones, Halalu, Shekishto et atman l'salda. These who adorn themselves for the banquet, Yeshuva, Yochlovi, Ishto, let them sit, eat, and drink because they were prepared. Hallelujah, Shalok, Ishto, Atman, Lesoda, those who fail to adorn themselves for the banquet, Yamdo, Vayiro, they may stand and watch the others. Chatano, Shal Rabbi Meir, Mishum Rabbi Meir, Amar. So the son in law of Rabbi Meir said in the name of Rabbi Meir, Ah, Hemir in Kim Shamshin, even the foolish. Here, any foolish servants appear at least to be attendants serving the others. So even the foolish appear to be attending. Attending. So need his, his expansion. Yeah. Rabbi Meir's son in law. Rabbi Meir's son in law said in the name of Rabbi Meir. If the punishment for those who did not prepare themselves in advance was merely to stand and watch, it would not be severe enough because they also look like servants of the feast, which is not such a disgraceful punishment. Mm. Both these and those, the wise and the foolish, are seized at the banquet. Hallelujah, Ochlin. Um, these eat there, the Halu Ravin, and while the and so the wise ones eat there, and these foolish ones go hungry. Halu Shatin, the wise drink, the Halu Tzayim, and the foolish thirst. Shinemar, Koma Hashem, Hine Abadai Yochelu Vatem Tiravu. Behold, my servants will eat, but you will hunger. Hine Avadai gishtu vatem titzma'u. My servants will drink, but you will thirst. Hine, hine avadai yaronu mituv lev. My servants will sing for gladness of heart. Vatem titzaku mikev lev. And you'll cry out from heartache. Devar acher. This is in respect of the... Have a quote. The quote, let your garments be white. So another interpretation of that, Bechol et yo bekadech levanim, at all times let your garments be white, Elul tzitzit, this is a reference to tzitzit, U veshemen al roshecha al yechsa, and your head never lack oil, Elul tefillin. This is a reference to tefillin. Hadran alach shoel. Chapter 24, Perek Esrim Ve'arba, called Mi Shehech Shich. Mishnah. Ready to go on? Mi Shehech Shich Pladerech, one who was on the road as dusk approached on Friday afternoon. Noten Kiso Lenachri should give his purse Sorry, not ten kiso. The nochri should give his purse to a gentile during the daytime. He may name nochri, and if there's no gentile with him, manicho al hachamor, place the purse on the donkey. Kigela chater hachitzona. When he reaches the outermost courtyard uh, of the city, and starts to unload the donkey, notel et hakelim hanitalin b'shabbat. He can take off any utensils that can be moved on Shabbat. V'she'enan nitalim b'Shabbat. However, those that may not be moved on Shabbat because they're mukta, matir hachavalim v'hasakin noflin melehim. Instead, he undoes the ropes that fasten them to the saddle and the sacks fall down on their own. Hmm. That's very reasonable. Gemara. So yeah. you'd have to have a Shabbat stick and a knot. Yeah. No, yeah, good point. Why did the rabbis permit him to give his purse to a Gentile? Kim lehu the rabbis determined to ein adam amidat mamono. A person cannot restrain himself from saving his property. Ilo sharid lei, 
if you do not permit him to to give it to the Gentile, ate la yute le la ayetuye, sorry, arba amot bir shvatarabim, he may come to carry it for amot in the public domain and commit a violation. Amma. So just a side comment on this. You know how some of our co religionists tell you you can't trust the Gordi. You know, they only have wickedness in their heart. Well, anything they do for you, they do out of... Uh, we read that in the Talmud, in the Gemara. And uh, it, it's a message that you hear frequently from the black coats. And yet here, really? Yeah. How do we... Okay, I've on. heard it so many times from the Barbatras. Okay. Uh, so <coughs> it's at the comic. Yeah. But, I mean, here, <coughs> there's no doubt, you know, that give it to a Gentile. Obviously, in a, in a maybe not in spiritual matters, but in uh, you know material matters, they can be trusted. Certainly I enough to save you from preaching Shabbat. This whole time, the way I've been thinking about it as I've been reading it, it would would have appeared to me that the Gentile worked for him. But maybe not. No, he wouldn't be. Because you can't get your employee or your Gentile employee to do things for you that you can't do yourself. So it has to be somebody who's travelling in the same caravan or walking along the road on the same route. Amarava, Daka Kiso, his purse only, Aval Metsia Lo, but not uh, a, an object that he picked up. So you can't give him something else, basically. Is that right? Yeah, can't, a lost object he can't give him. Shita, that's obvious. Kiso, now we learnt in our Mishnah, it says his purse. Maho Tatema, you might have said. Who had enough Filo Metsia? That the same law applies even to found objects. But hide the katanic he saw, and when the mission teaches his purse, or de milta katane, it's merely teaching a typical case. Kamash Malan, Rabbi's ruling informs us that it's specific to the purse. The law amran ela de lo lite, and we may say this only between the purse and the found object. Only where the found object had not come into his hands before Shabbat. Aval, I tell day, if however the object came into his hands before Shabbat, Kechise Dame, it is comparable to his own purse. Oh, that's a curious clarification. Ikid de Amre, some say, Ba'e Rabba, Rabba inquired, Mitsia Haba'a le Yado Mahu, what's the status of a found object that came into his hands? Hands before Shabbos commenced. Kevan does only day he say dame. Since it has come into his hands, it should be comparable to his purse. Or Dilma or perhaps Kevan de Lotarach bar love kifli say dame. Since he expends no effort, no effort in getting it, is it not comparable to his purse? Say cool. Let's wait till Mashiach comes. A do you want to say anything? Well, since he did not exert himself to acquire it, its legal status is not like that of his pouch nor purse. The money in your... Uh, since he expended no effort, he would be capable, of <coughs> be capable of restraining himself even when faced with losing it. Therefore, there is no need for the sages to permit him to give it to a Gentile. The Gemara concludes that the matter taken down and resolved. Yeah. Um, so the Shulchan Aruch deals with this in a Does that match up with what you just told me? He says if he took possession of the found object before sure. Shabbat, it's the same status as the purse. No. My guess is that if you take it, hold of it before Shabbat starts, you 
can A, you've made the effort of acquisition by picking it up, mm. and by picking it up you've acquired ownership. Yeah. Right. You're raising it, you're doing a Kenya with the object. But I don't know the laws relating to Kenya. I think that's only where there are two people. I wonder how it differs from the object on his donkey, which some things he's allowed to take off and some, some mm -hmm. things he just drops. And it must be a valuable object. It has to be. Mm -hmm. Any monarchy, if there's no Gentile with him, he should put the person in his donkey. There's a halakha here. Yeah, go ahead. Specifically with regard to his own pouch, but in the case of a lost object, no. One may give a Gentile an object that he is carrying on Shabbat if it is one's own property. However, it is prohibited to give a Gentile someone else's lost object that one found after Shabbat began. So the critical thing seems to be whether you picked it up before Shabbat. By picking it up before Shabbat, mm. you acquire it, and therefore, <coughs> on that basis, you can give it to a Gentile because it's become yours before Shabbat came in. Yeah. And they're objects that you have that you can give to a Gentile. Whereas, if you picked it up on Shabbat, you have a problem in acquisition. I think that's probably what's going on. Yeah. Any monarch, if there's no Gentile with him, Tamadani Monokri, the reason uh, he puts it on his donkey is because there's no gentle with him. Hayeshi Monokri, if of course there was a gentle with him, Lenokri Yakivle, he should give it to the gentle. My Tama, what's the reason he just doesn't put on the donkey in the first place? Chamor, Atamid Mitzme Suve, Al Shvi Tato, your commander regarding the repose of your donkey. What's the repose of your donkey? You're, this is Shabbat, remember. So you are commanded with regard to the donkey's rest on Shabbat. Ah. With a Gentile, you have, he has no Shabbat uh, function. You know, in that sense, he, you're not There's no required yep. to look after his, his rest. Nochri atamit suver al shvitato. But you're not commanded about the repose of the Gentile. Right, as you said. Chamo becheresh shoteva katan. Uh, a donkey, so travelling with him is a donkey, a deaf mute, a deranged person, a minor. A chamor manachle, you should place the person on the donkey. Lecher shoteva katan lo yehivle, you should not give it to the deaf mute, the deranged person, or the minor. My tamo, why not? Hane adam, these three are human, hai love adam. And this one is not human. I assume all those other three are Jewish as well. Cheresh for shoteh, if if he has a deaf mute and a deranged person only, I assume no donkey. Le Chate, you give it to the deranged person. Chate a Katan, a deranged person, a minor. Le Chate, you give it to the deranged person. And he, deranged person, he translates as an imbecile, which is something slightly different to a deranged, deranged person. Yeah. An imbecile is just somebody of such low intelligence that he's practically non functioning. Yeah. Ibailahu, they inquired, Cherish a katan mai, a deaf mute and a minor, what's the law? So if just those two are with him, he should give the wallet to. I live at the Rabbi Leza, Lord Tibailah. According to Rabbi Leza, you need not be in doubt. The Tanya is taught in the Baraita, so Rabbi Yisachar, Mimishum, Rabbi Leza. Trumat Cherish, the Truma, separated by a deaf mute. Lotte Telechulin should not be allowed. Unconsecrated status, meaning. It has the stringency of truma. So this is for a deaf mute. Deaf mute. Mipne shehul safek because uh, the status of that person is questionable, is in doubt. Perhaps he's competent. Perhaps he's not competent. Who knows? Ki tibaylah. When do you have a valid query? Aliba de rabbanan, according to the rabbis. Ditnan is in in mishnah. So they, the rabbi said deaf mute is, may not, is not legally competent. Because they said in the Mishnah, 
Chamisha lo yitramu, there are five who should not separate truma. The in time over ain truma tan truma, and if they did separate truma, they, their truma is no truma. Elohen, these are the ones. Cheresh, Shoseva Katan. A deaf mute, a deranged person, a minor. The. Uh, sorry. Cheresh. Shote. Katan. Shote. Sorry, a minor. The Hatorem et Sheno Shelo, one who separates Truma from, from produce that is not his. The Nofri Shetaram et Shel Israel Afil Birushato. And a Gentile who separates Truma from a Jew, the produce, the Jew's produce, even with his consent. Ain Truma to Truma. His Truma is no Truma. May. So what's the law regarding the curse? Lacheresh. Uh, Yahivle, should he give it to the deaf mute, to Katanate Lichal Zaj, since the minor will reach understanding one day. And you would assume the deaf mute will always be deaf mute. Or Dilma Lakatan Yahivle, or perhaps he should give it to the minor, to Cheresh Atele Ichalufbe Begadol Pikeach, since the deaf mute may be confused with a competent adult. Ika de Amre Lacheresh Yahivle, some say you should give it to the deaf mute. I find this whole argument distasteful. Ika to Amre Lakatanya Hivle, some say she give it to the minor. Ain Sham Lo Nachri Velo Chamo Velo Cheresh Velo Shate Velo Katamai. There is neither a Gentile, nor a donkey, nor a deaf mute, nor a deranged person, nor a minor. What should he do? Just imagine if. Um, what's his name? What's his name is the best case? Is the most perfect. Jewish. Um, that scientist. Oh, um, yes, I know who you in mean. In yes. yes, I know who you mean. He's the best example. Mm. The world's smartest person, let's say. Um, I know who you mean. The name's not coming at the moment. I can see his face, though. Yeah. Um, Hawking. Yeah, Stephen Hawking. Well done. Um, Good example. Mm. Amar Rabbi, it just goes to show what we know today with this sort of new thing, right? That's all it is, isn't it? Yeah. There was a, an assumption. Well, I think, in a sense, valid. Because no one would sit down to teach a deaf mute to communicate by writing because of the difficulty of communicating. Mm. So... You knew this person had a certain level of rationality because he was alive and moving around. But you couldn't communicate to him, he couldn't communicate to you. So there'd always have to be a doubt about his capacity to understand. Yeah. If he'd been able to, re uh, to read and write, it might have been different. But no one would have wasted time on teaching. So this is a great example of how Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Eliezer was much more of a forward thinker than the rest of the rabbis, because mm -hmm. he was the one that said, "You treat their their um, their truma with the stringency of truma, yeah. because their status is questionable. And Maybe they're they, perfectly competent. Maybe they fully understand what they're doing and they're setting it aside and." in a halakhically appropriate fashion, mm. with proper intentions. Should we keep going? Yeah. Amar Rabbi Yitzchak. <coughs> so if you've got none of these people, what do you do? None of these things. Well, oh, of course, the answer to the end of the office, you call your wife up and you give her the first. <laughs> Next time you're going to do that, let me cover it for you. Well, do you want to wind it back? <laughs> <laughs> Amar Rabbi Yitzchak, or Acheret Haita, there was yet another method. Velora tochachamim la galota, but the sages did not wish to reveal it. Mayod Acheret Haita, what was this other method? Malich o pachot pachot ma'abamot, you may carry it in increments of less than four amot. Amay lo ratochachamim la galota, and why did the sages not want to reveal this? Mishum kivod elohim haster dava uchod malachim chakor dava. Because they use the verse, uh, Basuk, which is from Proverbs, is that Mishle? Yes. 
Regarding the honour of God, you should conceal a matter. But regarding the honour of kings, you should investigate a matter. Because publicising this method would, comp would compromise the honour of God, the sages did not want to reveal it. And here, what um, threat well, in regard of the honour of God, what's the problem? Because one who might come to carry a purse for a mot in the public domain without stopping. So that's a big problem. Tanya. Is for a mot six feet? Is it? But is it roughly two metres? A little bit less than two metres. But. Um, I can't remember whether for a mot is dry banana or mindoraisa. No, I can't answer. Because that kind of puts a bit of a hole in that argument if it's dry banana. If you follow what, do you follow what I mean? No, I don't. Well, if you can't carry in the public domain, mm. that's one thing. So the, maybe the question arose, how far can you carry in the public domain? And the rabbi said, for a mot. So it's to rub a nut. To, they created a, mm -hmm. a, a, standard. Standard, a standard or a gazera mm -hmm. to stop you from going over a certain amount. So... I think it would have to be a, a rabbinical. I think it would have to be mindoraisa. If you're going to say that if you're going to say uh, that... Uh, uh, the Chumash says that you can't carry. It's the rabbis who would have sat down and worked out the distance that yeah. constitutes carrying. It's, uh, I agree with you, except I don't understand how, that, how the, that argument could make any sense unless it was out of the Torah, for what was out of the Torah. Well, I, I'm sure they found some way of... <laughs> 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 this is in this case, <laughs> right. Tanya was certain of to Rabbi Lezor Amer. Bo bayom gad shu se'ah. On that day. That's the day when Beit Shammai got their 18 uh, special sort of regulations through when Beit Hillel didn't turn up. Right. At the academy. Related in the Gemara, Hananya isolated himself in an attic to write a commentary on the book of Ezekiel. On one occasion, a large contingent of disciples of both Shammai and Hillel came to visit him, and all the great scholars of the time were present. They then took the opportunity to enact various laws. Remember, we learned this at the beginning of yep. Shabbat. Yeah. Rav Nisim Gaon states this was the same day Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah was appointed Nazi. Okay. Uh, on that day, they heaped up the se'ah measure. I assume it means they calculated it. On that day, they measured with a large se'ah measurement. That is, they did well to issue these decrees which construct a fence around the Torah to prevent its violation. On that day, they levelled the sa measure. They measured with a minimal of sa. That is, because these decrees are difficult to observe, they not only will lead people to violate the decrees, but to violate Torah prohibitions as well. Uh -huh. I see. I would have said the other way around. I would have said heaped up would be they did too much. Well, they did a lot, you see, and that, that's great. Oh, it's just, they're saying the same thing, but just different. Well, one saying that it's a wonderful thing, that they've raised all these um, barriers to sinning. Yeah. Another saying... That's the heaped up. Yeah. Another one saying, no, 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 you know, by doing this, you've increased the chance of sinning by increasing the number of barriers to people's yeah. lives. Tanya, it was taught in a brisa. Mashal's a rabbi a parable illustrating rabbi opinion. 
le ma hajara domet, what is the matter comparable, le kupa milea kishuin vidiluin, to a box full of melons and gourds, adam noten le tocha chardal vehi makazeket, a person pours mustard seed into it, and all the guests will be filled, and the box will hold its contents. Mashal to Rabbi Yeshua, the parable according illustrates Rabbi Yeshua's opinion. The matter was what's the matter comparable? The areva melea davash to a basin full of honey. Not in the tocha rimonim veegozim vehi mekia. A person places pomegranates and nuts into it, and the basin will disgorge the honey that was put there first. I see. So it's exactly the same analogy. Yeah. With a different end. One is saying that. The basket will hold the mustard seeds, and mm-hmm. therefore you've increased what's there. Mm-hmm. And others saying that by putting in the pomegranates and walnuts, mm-hmm. you're expelling the honey, so it, uh, you're losing all the uh, mitzvot that that are represented by the honey. You're not increasing the quantity that's held by the container at all. Amamar. If there is no gentle with him, he should place the purse on his donkey. If there is no gentle with him, he should place the purse on his donkey. But he is leading a loaded animal on Shabbat, which is a malacha. Do not do any malacha, you and your animal. That's what it says in the Pasuk. Amar Ravada Barahava. He places the person on the donkey when it's already walking. So he's not completing a malacha. But it's impossible that the donkey will not stand still at some point to, for example, urinate or defecate. There is a lifting up and a placing down as well. That's when it when it's walking, it stops and starts, I think it means. When it stops, then when it starts up again, because it's got the burden on it, he's not saying this. Um, yeah. Um, it is as if it's lifted the stuff. Right. And then carries. Yes. My, my argument to that would be, no, you know, if the thing, the object, the pouch is already on it, Yeah. When it's standing, it's just supporting. It's not lifting. Lifting is an action of taking something up. All it's doing is it's already <coughs> supporting it. So there's still, I would argue, and I know I'm wrong in this, and everybody will tell me that I'm wrong, but it just seems to me supporting is different to lifting. And unless supporting is also uh, uh, one of the malachot, well, and I don't think it is. Um, I don't see that there's a problem. But of course, the Rabbanim disagree with me totally, and therefore we will move on accepting what they I do. agree insofar as if it's on him, it's supporting it full stop. Yeah. Which I think is something you're saying as well. Yeah. But anyway, the Rabbanim take it as being the equivalent of. When the donkey is walking, you should place the on it. And when it stops, uh, like to urinate or defecate, he removes it until the donkey starts walking again. He should also put his wallet, even even his on his friend in that same way. So if your friend, his Jewish friend is walking next to him, he can do the same thing. Amara Papa. Kol shebegufo chayev chatat. Any malacha? I think that that's in a way it's part of your question, Peter, because you can do it with the donkey, but you can't do it with a Jew. Mm. So what's the difference? Kol shebegufo chayev chatat. Any malacha that uh, he performs by himself, he's liable to a chatat. Chaverah patur aval asur. With his friend, he exempt, but he's exempt from a chatat, but is prohibited. Uh, by the rabbis, call shechaver rovatur aval asur. Any malacha that, uh, if he completes it with a friend, he's exempt but prohibited. The chamura mutar lechachila. With a donkey, it is permitted outright.
Ama Rabada Barahava. Hang on, I just want to see the note on that. The, can I, do you mind if I read the note? Yeah, go ahead. The rabbinic prohibition of jointly completing malacha applies only to two people. It does not apply to a person and a donkey. Thus, in the case of the donkey, we need concern ourselves only with the donkey's actions. And so long as the person is placed on it while the donkey is in motion, the donkey transports it without an akira. Thus, the biblical prohibition of leading an animal to form a malacha does not apply. Although a conveyance alone without an akira is prohibited rabbinically, and although it is forbidden to cause an animal to perform even a rabbinically prohibited activity on the Shabbat, the rabbis waive this rabbinic prohibition for a stranded traveller, lest he be driven to carry the person himself, as explained earlier in the Gemara. The problem is, is that, the way I see it, the problem is, is that the Pasuk, in the Torah, specifically says you can't do it with you and your animal. Mm-hmm. You and your animal. Yeah. That's even more so than than jointly completing a malacha. He quotes here the full Pasuk. <laughs> and the seventh day is Shabbat for the Lord your God. You shall not perform any manner of labor, neither you nor your son nor your daughter nor your slave nor your maidservant, nor your animal, nor your stranger that is within your gates. Huh? Yeah, that's the full quote. So, the stranger within your gates, I mean, we usually say to be a convert, but yes. really, I mean, it includes the God who is living amongst you. Except you're not. The, the difference here is that it's within your gates, and here it doesn't. I don't feel so I strictly. It's not in your gates. Within your gates, would I, I would argue would mean anywhere in the land of Israel. Yeah, it's obviously a minefield of issues, mm. isn't it? Hmm. Okay. Ama Ravada Barahava. Haita Chavilato Monachas Lo Al Ktefo. If he had a pack resting on his shoulder, his Shabbos approach, ra- approached Rats Tachteha Ad Shemagila Beitor, he may run beneath it without stopping until he reaches his house. So, in other words, you can keep it on your shoulder and run to your house. Yeah. Because that is not the normal way of carrying. Import, he never. He must never stop to rest. Mm. Again, with a bit. This is. A, I, I know. I've read the footnotes here. The, the problem is that if you've got a big load, the source you carry on your shoulders, mm. putting it down and picking it up mm. becomes an impossible labour. You know, walking three paces to make sure you're within the four, putting it down, then picking it up and walking another three becomes impossible. So it's better to run mm. with it on your shoulders, mm. which shows you're not carrying it in the usual way people will realise this is a Shabbat problem. And then when you get to your destination, just cross it off. <laughs> it reminds me of... Um driving home in a car pre-Shabbos and like Shabbos comes in and you're still in your car so it's okay to keep continue to continue this is not okay it's okay <laughs> to continue driving to your house as long as you never stop and when you get to your house you open the door and leave it all running still maybe okay dove car Rats, only if he runs. Aval, kale, kale, lo. But if he walks leisurely, it's not permitted. My tama, why not? Cave and delayed lay he kera. Since he has no reminder, uh, when he walks, he has no reminder, but he may not stop. Ate le me avad, le me evad, akira vanacha. He may come to lift up and set down. Right. Sosof. Kimatalabete inevitably when he reaches his house. It's impossible that he will not stand for a moment before going inside. But Kamayel 
Merish Shatara Bimler Shatar Yachid, and you were bringing from public domain into a private domain. Dezarikle Kilachar Yad. That's not an issue because he throws his pack in a backhanded, unusual way. No melacha. Except you exert yourself, probably. Ama Rami Barchama. I'm home, darling. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So, in a backhanded way, it might be that you just fall over. Ama Rabi Barchama. Ha Mechamer Achabem To Beshabbat. One who leads his loaded animal on Shabbos. By, with his voice, that, that is. Beshoger Chayav Chatat. He, if inadvertently, he's liable for a chatat. Bemezi Chayav Skila. If intentionally, he's liable for stoning. My tama. Why? What's the reason? Is no malacha. Amarabba Adama Kara. Because the verse says, Lo tasecho malacha tov yohem techa. Do not do any malacha, you and your animal, etc. Or you, etc. and your animal. Behem to dormia dide. Uh, his animal is analogous to himself, Mahu, just as when he does a malacha, Beshoge Chayav Chatat, Bemezi Chayav Skila. Inadvertently, he's liable to a Chatat, uh, and if it was done intentionally, he's liable for stoning. Ah, Benjo Nami. So too for the animal. Beshoge Chayav Chatat, Bemezi Chayav Skila. Inadvertently, he's liable to a Chatat, intentionally, he's liable for stoning. Okay. Amarava, Shtei Shuvah Padavah. There are two rebuttals to this. Chazad Yichtiv. First, it says in the Pasuk, in Dvarim, Torah Chati Yelachem Laoseh Bishkaga Ve'an Nefesh Asher Taseh Be'ad Ramah. There should be a single law for you, for one who acts with inadvertence, but a person who shall act high-handedly, which is someone who commits idolatry, have one law that is Torah for him that does unwittingly and for the proselyte who resides among them but the soul that does with a high hand whether he be home born or a stranger he blasphemes the Lord and that soul shall be cut off from among his people ah uh, let's see Hukshah Kola Kola Lava Zazara ah all the Torah, all the provisions of the Torah compared to idolatry. Uh-huh. That's how it fits. Mava da Zara David Maseba Gufe, just as idolatry, um, when he performs an action himself, he, that requires a chatat. Hachanamiya David Maseba Gufe, so here also, um, Ashabas violation in Kaza Chatat. Only if he performs an action himself, himself. which in- excludes the animal. Well, it's none. And furthermore, we learned in a Mishnah, Mechalel at Shabbat, one who desecrates Shabbat, but the Vash Chayvin al Shig Gato, Chatat Vals Dono, Skila, by doing something that is subject to a Chatat when done inadvertently, is subject to stoning when he does it deliberately. Because Ikamidi, this implies that there is something. Uh, that is that can desecrate Shabbat. To en chayvin al shikagato chatat, for which one is not liable to a chatat when done inadvertently. The law al zedonoskila and not stoning when done deliberately. Or my nihu. What is this? What transgression is this? Love timchamer prohibition of leading a loaded animal. Lo no tchumin valiba de rabbi akiva. Tchum laws and according and this according to Rabbi Akiva. Uh, Rabbi Akiva says that the prohibition is biblical. The Hava Ara, Aliba de Rabbi Yossi, or kindling according to Rabbi Yossi, or prohibition of kindling according to Rabbi Yossi. Who holds that it is not no. punishable by right. stoning and by lashes, like out of prohibitions. Uh huh. We'll just finish that paragraph. Rabbi yeah. Vid Matmehachi, Rabbi taught it this way. Ama Rabbi Barachama, Mechamera Chabe Mabe Shabbat, 
one who leads an animal on Shabbat, Beshogeg Eno Chayochatat, Bemezid Chayochskila. So, uh, if inadvertently he's not liable to a chatat, if intentionally he's liable to stoning. Anyway, we have that very similar objection, so we'll cover that tomorrow.